Dave here, how are you? Today is the 5th of April. And today also is the first day that we've stepped back from daylight savings. So for us in the Southern Hemisphere, it is autumn and we're falling backwards. That's the way to remember it. So hopefully more people around the world will be able to tune in without, you know, tuning in at three or four in the morning, if you watch live. Okay, today on the show, it's a mixed bag. It really is a mixed bag. We've got uh, Michael Jamison has sent some photos in and Bob Macker has sent some photos in. So Michael's about a little jig that he made, the mitre uh, jig for his table saw, uh, for the box blind jig, I should say. And Bob is making uh, blast gates out of plywood and PVC pipe. And they're fascinating to watch. And I encourage you to send photos in of what you're doing during this lockdown period. Uh, today, 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 I'm going to rip, uh, using the bandsaw, I'm going to thickness, using the thickness planer, I'm going to change the paper in my drum sander down to 240 grit, and we're going to sand something, and we're going to jump into a spire, and we're going to muck around with some software there to create some vectors and a little couple of toolpaths, and then we're going to go over to the CNC machine, and actually run it. Now, you might wonder what it is. Well, remember last week, we went to great lengths in sanding all of this and putting the magnets in, and it ended up a disaster. <laughs> what can I say? The reason being, the rock maple that I chose had been live sawn, which means that the rings are like this. Quarter sawn, where the rings are kind of coming through this direction, is a whole lot steadier. I was going to say more steady, but both ways will work. Now, because the rings are going that direction, where the timber isn't laminated, see I've got the red gum here, laminated onto there, onto the rock maple. Above it, that, that part's fine, but above it, it's got this massive cup. So instead of going onto the side of my plane, which it works. Where are we? Wrong way up, idiot. <laughs> Turn it around the right way. It locked on beautifully. It's not going anywhere. But instead of being 90 degrees here, I've got about 88 or 87 degrees, which not good enough. The pieces of timber that I practice on, and I tried all sorts of things. I even sanded the side of this to try and compensate. The thing is, I was going so far that then I my fence started coming off where the blade was and I was getting a little bit of a, a residual as I was planning. And going, so it all just went to tears. So what I've done is, give me a sec, I'll, I'll grab it. I've laminated another piece of rock maple. So how nice is that? And you'll see, remember, I've got this nice area down here that I want to work in the back of the plane because it's pardon me, nice and rounded. And I've laminated it, laminated it to a piece of Brazilian bloodwood. I had it. It was left over from one of the shows. You know, you go to these wood shows and you see all this beautiful timber and you buy some. It had been sitting in the rack for a couple of years and I was thinking, you know what? Here's perfect opportunity for it. So I've created, as I say, this lamination. You can see on the bloodwood, it is quarter sawn. The rock maple is like so on. So as I say, the rock maple, the bloodwood is going this direction, the grain, the growth rings that way, and on the rock maple, it's going like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep the rock maple to the outside, so I'm still going to get the same result. It's going to be rock maple there, and instead of red gum, which I had there, this is going to be the Brazilian bloodwood. Now, rather than glue another piece on top, I'm going to get the CNC to create what's called a pocket. It's going to cut out a little hole the size that I want. Well, it's actually bigger, and I'm going to finish it off with a uh, capex. And it's going to put those two holes in there for me for the rare earth magnets, those guys there, in the bottom as well. Now, with the spire, I can do that really easily. So <laughs> bear with me. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to rip the Brazilian bloodwood I don't want to use all of that, and rather than put it all through the thickness and turn it into shavings, I'm going to throw it away. I thought it might be an idea to rip part of it off, and I can keep that, 
and because it's really nice, really, really, really nice wood. And I'll clean that up a little bit later and I might use that in some boxes for sleeves inside a box. Never can tell, I might use it in that one I've done down the back there with the rock maple that we did on the show. So, as I said, I've cleaned all of this up, laminated it, glued it, cut it all off, you know, rip, run it through the, uh, over the jointer and then through the table saw and then jointer again. And it's going to be very, very nice. That's the first thing we're going to do. How about we do that right now on the bandsaw? Now I've got the mag switch uh, fingers, up, feather boards over there to support it. Uh, glasses, and I'm going to switch cameras as well because you'll want to watch, obviously. Well, I'm hoping you will. There we go. Okay, so it's set up. I've got my dusty control here. And away it goes. How nice is that? <laughs> All right, I'll come around the back. I've already got all of this set up, so hopefully it's going to go perform very nicely for me. I'll just tighten that up a little bit more. That's better. All good. I've got the tension on the blade. Always, always a good idea, tension your blade before you start your saw up. Do all that. Plug it in. This is the next thing. I thought I prepared everything, but you know, no. Nah. Done. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to go around the other side. The fingers are holding on to it. And I'll pull her out. Gotcha. Okay. Pop those there, turn that machine off. And that one. Move this out of the way, come back over here. Switch the cameras back to the main one. It works okay, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move this straight away to there because that's our next process. And see that, I've kept that now. This will be lovely for using with boxes. Could even make a box out of it. Beautiful. This is what I'm left with here. And I'm going to run this through the thickness planer. It wasn't a bad cut. You can see here is where I stopped. Came around to the other side of the saw and moved it. And there's a couple of points along where I've slowed down. These, these are kind of little witnesses to what you've been doing. All right, through the thickness planer, I'm going to lower this down before I change the camera. So I'm going to lower this down till it's registering on the little indicator here. I'm going to go like that because I may have a slight taper 
it, it might be kind of shaped like a wedge. So I've got to be careful I don't strain the machine. I'll put it in. I'm going to check both ends to start. Yeah, see, that's a whole lot more. So I'm going to, I'm going to, especially using a bandsaw, bring that back up to there. Good. Lock it there. Open the dust port. It's plugged in. We'll switch cameras as well. Back again. That looks all right. Put these bad boys back on. I might have to have a chat to um, George and see if we can do another competition. Um, this one on. I've got a piece of wood in front of it. What am I doing? This is an infrared system. I've got a piece of plywood for another project I'm doing that was lent in front of the receiver for the infrared. So, I'm going to do this one around the back. <laughs> All right. Let's see how we go. A little nip right at the end. Lovely. Down. Half a turn. I see the grain direction. I'm getting some, a little bit of tear there, so I'm going to turn it around and go the other way. So a quarter of a turn. And off. That's a whole lot nicer. Come back to this one. And this one off. There we go. So now my blank is looking pretty decent. I'm going to run that through at 240 grit on the drum sander. But, you know, rather than do the, do the lazy way and just run it through the thickness, so I've still got this that I can use for another project. Why get rid of it? You know. All right. Let's run through the drum sander next. So I'll plug it in. to here, drop that one off, move this one around to here, onto there. Oh, one thing I wanted to do before I ran it through, and I'll do this before I, um, I need to change the paper. I said I was gonna change the paper on it. So again, for people who've got one of these machines, if you're not sure, I'll switch the cameras around again about how to change the paper. That should be okay. All right. First thing to do is open it up. I, this paper, I think, is 120 grit. So I'm going to undo that. And again, we, there's a thing. I'll bring this camera around to here. Might be better. Yeah, you can see everything there. So on the side here, we've got this pin. Come around even further. Shut that. Okay, there's a pin here that I push in and that releases. So I can now hold on to that. Pull it out. And then when I do this, it lets the pin go back again. So I'm going to take the paper off. I'm going to roll it up as it goes because I'm going to use this paper again. And this end. Release it. This is 240 grit. And that's how it's coming off there. I'm going to put that down there. Squeeze this and put it in to there. Roll it on slowly. I'm 
khaki handed at the moment. I'm going to let it go and come around to the other side. That's a whole lot easier. There we go. Now I need to just line that up a little bit better. See how it's pushing out the top there? That's better. And I'm pushing it a little bit slowly at the moment as well. Don't get that caught. Because I pinched my, the pad on my finger. I don't know if you... Oh, it's this one here. I pinched that. It was caught in a clamp. <laughs> Can you believe it? I, it was a lever clamp and I released it. It was up on top of the cabinet that I was building. And I, it was overhead. No, no, I'm talking to this camera here. It was overhead and I reached up to release it. And I, my finger got in the way as I was pushing the lever and I got caught in the mechanism. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever had anything happen to you like that? If you're watching the, the premiere, put a comment and uh, tell me how silly you were as well. <laughs> Push that in and that opens the jaw up and I can slide this in. And because sandpaper is pretty stiff, I rock it backwards and forwards a little bit on that and it kind of it sneaks the paper in, then I can let go. These don't have to be closed up. That little gap can be there. It's not going to worry it. Beautiful. What do you think? I think that's pretty cool. Close that, open that up like so, drop that down there, put that on there. Now I can connect the power. I didn't have the power connected before. Right, that's connected to that, that's connected to that. Power on. Um, I'll I'm not going to wear the earmuffs in this situation. It really doesn't need it. I'm going to run this through, lower it down until it touches there. That's it. Got it. Turn the dust extractor on. Beautiful. And this. Here we go. That's just about done. What's happening is it's getting rid of those tiny little track marks. You can see how good the thickness is because there's very, very little snipe, hardly anything. See that little line there? I've only taken a skerrick off with the sander. Another pass, and I think that'll do me on that one. Then I'm going to go back to the thickness thicknesser again, because I want to take some of that rock maple off. One more pass. An interesting noise it's making. I'm going to have a look. Turn this off. Maybe the paper is pulling up tighter. Or oh, a little bit of burning there. Let's clean that before it gets too bad. Come on, you rotten thing.
There we go. That's a bit cleaner. But you can see I've got a couple of burn spots there. They're always nasty. That's why it was making those funny noises. All right. I was probably a little bit too aggressive at that time. So we'll close that back up and I'm going to move the dust extract, I'm going to, uh, sorry, switch machines back to the thickness planer and remove some of that rock maple. <clears throat> well, let's see. That should be okay there, shouldn't it? Should be. Don't it just so you can see what's happening. Uh, turn that on. You can see where we're up to here, how much cleaner it is. We're going to take some of this off because I don't want all the rock maple hanging off the outside. So I'm going to take it down around about three millimeters. I will use the eye muffs for this. Spin them around. That's all working, that's all good. Now, I'm curious. Have I shut this one? No, I've got this other one open as well. That should work a bit better. Yep. Had the other blast gate open. Give it another cut. That's better. That's where I'm up to now. I've got about six millimeters left on there, and I think that's going to be good. I'm going to uh, put this through the sander. Okay, there, down a little, like so. Pull that back, down a bit. I'm going to work over this side. All I did then was Feed it in until I, I heard it starting to touch. There she goes. It's a really nice figure, just there. Absolutely beautiful. until I've got a consistent cut with the sandpaper all the way through. Nearly there.
That's good. Turn that one off. Switch it back here so you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so that's, that's our machining basically done. So that's, that's the end that I want to keep. And it's got some beautiful figure in it. You're not going to really see it quite yet. But you can see, you can start to see it here. So, and then the Brazilian bloodwood on the back. And it's now it's a really decent thickness. Okay, so this is where I've got to wear my thinking cap. Uh, before we do, before we jump into that, pull the strides up, and I'm going to show you uh, Michael Jamison's box. Here we go. Now, Michael made this jig uh, to do the splines on his table saw. You can see the, the timber runners in the bottom that go into the miter slots. And he's got those, a T-track on the side that you can't see, the side that's kind of facing back towards us. And a couple of T-bolts that hold those little plywood supports that lock the box in position. So he's gone one, two, three. There you go, there's all your different, the, the splines in each corner. And I think he's used a flat top blade uh, he, that box is for a set of hair clippers. So he said that possibly he shouldn't have done it in cedar uh, because it, it dents easily. But, you know, live and learn. This is not bad for a, for a first attempt with that spline jig. I think he's done a fantastic job. And also, Michael's a little bit of a mad keen fisherman and he's just caught himself a 5kg snapper. So thanks, Michael, for sending those in to us. I hope that it all tasted nice. And uh, again, if you've got things to send in, send it in. How about we have a look at Bob Macker's things next? Now, Bob sent me a series of photos and a story. So I printed the story out, and there was about eight or so photos, so I put them into a slideshow. It may or may not work, but what I'm going to do is so he says, Hi, Dave. So photos described as follows. A, and I'm hoping they're in the right order, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. If they're wrong, I'm, they're wrong. But he's done these blast gates because he wasn't impressed with the plastic blast gates, so he made his own. Now, I've got plastic blast gates here, and you know, they work fine for me. I don't know what people do to them, whether they're a little bit rough, drop them on the floor. Well, they're not going to like that too much, but, you know, I look after my things. I'm not saying Bob doesn't look after his things, but maybe his have had accidents uh, where mine have all been wearing seatbelts. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to start the slideshow. Where are we? Um, da, 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 da. Here we go. Starting. I'm hoping it's going to start at the right spot. Transition. Come on. It's not going to do it, is it? It didn't want to do it at all. So let's come back here. I don't know why it didn't want to do it. I, here we go. It's starting. All right. So parts is required to build. I've got it in totally the wrong spot. Let's just let this run out and it should come back to the beginning. This is across the garage door. This is it in use. This is what I really intended for you to see. <laughs> so we've got, the, there's all the blast gates there. And we're going to go to the first slide. Hopefully it's going to go to the first slide. Come on. I don't know if it's going to. Hopefully it will. Oh, this is very embarrassing, even on a recorded show. Come back to me here. I don't know why it did that. I'm going to see if I can get it to start again. If not, if not, we'll leave it till next, next time. Give another, another attempt to see what's going to happen. No. Oh, there we go. I don't know why the first images have disappeared. I really don't know. Bob, I'm sorry about that. We're going to leave that. 
children and animals and also slideshows now are added to the list of things you should never do on a live show I love it drink <clears throat> all right what I want to do we're coming back to this I'll do photos on their own next time so on the plane we have the rare earth magnets they're locked in they're down around about two and a half millimeters to the top of the magnet and I'm possibly also going to strip this face and refinish it now one of the why people are going to say Dave don't do that don't do it I have to when I sanded it I created a slight roll and that was another thing that's happening that when the fence went on it was rocking ever so slightly so it's not going to be hard for me to just clean that off uh, maybe one very very shallow pass over the jointer uh, making sure there's no metal bits there and then the fence can go on so now I need this to go on this way see down here this is this round section I was talking about to follow that shape that's how it's going to go on now let's go into a spire I'm going to mark that while it's there so I know where I'm at okay so this is top and yeah that'll be when I'm doing the aspire work that's I'll need that now we're only half an hour into the show so we've got plenty of time let me see if I have a spire there and I should do we'll see what happens I'm going to click this and then I've got to get a spire up to the top let's see if it works and there hopefully I'm down in the corner we'll see what happens all right now this job I've set up and I'll come out of the tool paths and come back over to the CAD section so this is CAD versus we were just in CAM before this is CAD now up in the corner here it will tell me the dimensions and all of that kind of stuff the width here I have made 676 millimeters now I don't know why I said those exact measurements but I'm now I'm looking around for a tape measure <laughs> as you can see there it is it's right in front of me I'm going to measure this well the piece of wood is 676 millimeters long that's why I did it and it's 101 millimeters wide the thickness of this job now is 20 21 millimeters so I'm going to change the thickness over here from 18 to 21 it's not really a biggie but 21.0 that's good from the material surface is my Z position which means I'm going to reference off the top of this with the uh, touch plate on the CNC so it'll come down working off the top of this not working off the bed that it's sitting on and we've got the datum position will be this corner okay next thing um, very high resolution and it's showing it as Canadian maple that really doesn't matter now these vectors I've created so this one here is the step down it's basically going to be this area here if we're working with this one it's going to leave this part alone and it's going to cut out a pocket it's going to, it's going to mill all of that out for me it'll do it in two passes about five millimeters each so it goes down about 10 millimeters next thing next thing next thing the circles this one and the other one over here so I can highlight the pair by left clicking and dragging up like so from right to left and it highlights those two vectors now those vectors I've created to be 19.2 millimeters diameter and 5.9 millimeters above this line here so looking at this it's get there five to the edge of those magnets is 5.9 millimeters down to the step and it works perfectly here but I've allowed 0.1 of a millimeter in, in my calculations just to let it sneak up a little bit higher all of this stuff I can fix a little bit later if it goes slightly pear-shaped but it should be okay now those holes I don't really want to put 
in the center of this board, I want them to move to the end that's like that. Now, because I'm here, and it's the same when I'm watching this camera, when I'm talking to you, this is mirror reversed. So, or, or not mirror reversed. It's staying constant. So, it, it, believe me, I have to rotate it like that. Which means, I can't rotate it like that because I'll end up in a mess. Now, I did say that that's the top on this job. And I have, you can see just here, what I'm seeing. So when I turn it around, and your view will be exactly the same. There you go, that's an easy way to show it. This is where I want this. The magnet has got to be 50 millimeters to the edge instead of being 100 and something. So I'm going to move those two vectors towards the left. The X is, sorry, X is across, Y is up and down the page, remember. So I'm going to move them across the X axis. I'm going to do that just by pushing on the cursor. I've linked them together. So the reason being, I wanted to have a little bit more space out the front here. I'm working from this point here on the rock maple back to the magnet there. And that's what you're seeing on that particular image that you're seeing in Aspire at the moment. Now, I can check. I've just left click on the, on the image and let's put all the vectors to sleep. Now, I'm going to get this guy. Where are we? Where are we? This one here. This is those dimensions. So I can check the distance. Now, I've got snapping happening with the geometry. So it's gone to the absolute corner. Oh, sorry, there is no corner on a circle. Um, it reminds me of put them in a round room and, and uh, yeah, not to worry, not to worry. Put the shovel in the corner. Uh, I'm going to left click on there and drag it over. Now, see here, I've got it on horizontal dimension until the line goes flat and then it, it's snapped to that point there. And it's going to tell me that's 88.378. Well, that's fine. I can move those two, pardon me, those two vectors over another 20 or 30 millimeters if I want to, but I'm going to leave them there. And we'll close that. And I'm going to highlight that dimension and hit the delete button and it's gone. Now, the Aspire is pretty easy to use once you've got your head wrapped around it. And it's very easy to learn. Like the learning curve is pretty, pretty shallow. It's not that hard. This is still in 2D. I have not progressed to 2.5 or 3D. That will happen. But for the moment, I'm staying with 2D. All right. Now, I have all of this. This is the blank size. So from here up to there, this is just the blank piece of wood. This vector here is the rebate or the pocket or the rabbit, whatever you want to call it. It's going to leave a little bit of wood on the edge because I'm going to use some um, clamping elements to hold the job on the spoil board. And now we're going to go over to, well, we'll save that. We'll say save. And now I'm going to go over to computer aided machining. So we'll click on this. And for people that know this backwards, that's good. I'm happy for you. Uh, for people that aren't interested, hopefully this will demystify a little bit of it for you. If I can do this, you know, just about anyone can do it. it it's a pleasure to do it. Now, down here, you'll see I've got uh, 0.375 of an inch end mill pocket. So that's for this vector here. Now, if I was to click on that, it will show that vector. And you can see that I want to go down 10 millimeters. See over here, I've told it I want to go down 10 mil. It's going to do it in two passes. You know what? I think I want to do it in maybe three. I'm going to check also whether 10 mil is going to be too much now that I've thicknessed the material down to 21. 10. I'm going to go down 9 millimeters. I want to go down 9. So let's go back here. We go to 9.0. And then I come down to edit the passes because I've already select. This is the, the end mill that I'm using. It tells me the, the step over. And it was a little bit shallow to start, but we're going to go with that. And how, how fast the router is going to be spinning, the spindle, 18,000 RPM. Its feed rate is six meters up, millimeters up 
a minute, six meters a minute, a little bit faster. I'm going to back it back to 5,000 millimeters a minute. Uh, I don't want it to, to struggle too much. I don't know how it's going to go with this Brazilian blood, but it should be fine. Uh, and so we're going to say apply and close. Now I'm going to edit the passes. So over here is saying, all right, I want to do it in half and half, four and a half millimeters and four and a half in the second one. I'm going to make it do one more pass. And we're going to click down here to go up to three passes. And this pass here, I want to be... Uh, let's, let's make that 7.0. And this one, oh, sorry, we've got to say apply. So the first one will do four millimeters, 4.0 and apply. And it'll move that down a little. And then the next one, oh, no, we don't want that, David. We want, oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> uh, why did I double click? Okay. We want it to be, last let's let's go back to this and then go back to there got it okay give me give me a second this one we're going to say 4.5 apply this one we're going to say 7.5 apply there you go now that last pass is going to be one and a half millimeters i got it right okay Got to be careful with this. This is something that you just have to be on top of. All right. Now, you will also, say, now I'm going to say calculate. Now, you notice also I'm saying climb. When it's in a pocket, what happens with a router when you're using an ordinary router and you're going, normally you would go clockwise if you're going inside or up against a fence. You would push it that direction against a fence. You would rarely pull a router back towards you against the fence there or against the, the, yeah, against the fence. Because pulling it back towards you, it's turning, the router itself is spinning clockwise. And it's going to want to, as it's called, climb. It's going to want to climb out of there. But the advantage of using a climb cut with the machine that it's going to hold onto, it's much stronger than the spindle is, is it's, it's cutting in at the face and then using this using itself as its waste, as its sacrificial part. So it's pushing back onto itself rather than if it was going the other direction, it's going to suffer from tear out as it's going along because it's pushing it out like that. So this way it's coming into the cut. It makes sense. Like if you've done a mason's miter on a kitchen bench top, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The first approach on your right hand side, you need to come in from the face, then you come from the back. If you can't start from the face on your right hand section. It works. It works. Okay. Now, because I've changed the depth of this pocket, I need to change the depth of those other two vectors, which are the circles, because I had them going down. I'll show you. Lock that. And hold on, before we do, we'll get, get out of there, get out of there and say calculate. No vectors selected. I know. There we go. Are you happy now? Calculate. Done. Let's have a look what it's going to do. I can give you a quick preview. I'll slow it down so it looks nice. This is what the machine is going to do. It's going to go the second run and the last one. Okay, now I can roll her over so you can see what's, what it looks like. That's the first pocket. Okay. Uh, I will do, when I finish the whole thing, I'm going to use my plane and I'm going to create the 45 on, in, on the edge of that pocket. The same as we have just here. You still with me? Um, I'm hoping you're watching because it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Now to get it back to how everyone was looking at it before, up here, we're going to click on the Z axis point up there. That's basically God's view, plan view, looking down on top of everything. So we'll click that and it'll take it back to the Z axis. The other ones are really boring because the X and Y, you're just looking into the edge. 
and I can go to a 3D axis if it wants to. It shows everything like that, but back to the Z. All right, now I'm going to reset the preview, which says get rid of all of that, and I don't want to look at it in three-dimensional view anymore. I'm going to go back to two-dimensional. There we go. So that has been done. That's fine. It's telling me all the details down here. You can see it's showing... Uh, well, I might have just pointed to something totally different there, but that's why I'm looking at the screen. Now, I'm going to select those two circles because I want them to be two, two and a half millimeters thick. There we go. And it will show that they've already been worked out. The cut depth is 12. I don't want the cut depth 12 anymore. I want it to be 11.5. Remember, we're working from the top, always from the top of this. We've gone down nine millimeters and another two and a half millimeters deeper for those magnets to be recessed in is 11.5. We're using the same tool. I'm not going to change anything to those passes. It will be fine. It's going to do a couple of cuts in the air and then it'll go down and do the cuts and two and a half millimeters will be fine. Now you notice also on these passes, because it's a profile tool path, not a pocket, which means it will only do one turn, one, one run around it. It might leave a tiny little bit in the center, but I'm not concerned about that. I've told it to do inside, inside the vector. See, so see that dotted line with the green dot? It's going to go inside that. I could tell it to go on it or outside it. So got to, and I'm also going to do climb in there as well because it is a neater cut. Okay, now also though I don't need any tabs. Um, I'm not going to ramp it because it's an end mill and it will just go straight into it and it will cut really quickly. Ramping means the cutter is going to, as it's spinning, it's going to do this. It's going to come down into the cut. All right. And I've got all that happening there and we shall calculate. And that's looking good. We've changed the position from before. So I need to have a quick look at that again. I need to, I think, I think that's good. I'm, I'm quickly thinking here. Let's get, let's preview it. And that's the holes. And we're going to preview all tool paths, but I'll speed it up. We should have the holes in the bottom still. There they are. And they should be two and a half millimeters deep. See that? And that's all where I want it to be. Good. Now that I've done that, I'm going to close that and we're going to select both of these. And because they've both got the same cutter, the same tool in the machine, the same tool in the router, that's all it is, it's a router. And this is telling it what to do instead of me telling it what to do. We're going to now save those tool paths in the, the post-processor that I use for my machine. A lot of post processors there's a lot out there. But this is the one for this, because we're using Mac 4 now. I'm going to save the tool paths to, let me see, let's go to this PC and USB drive. And we're going to call hand plane joint offense. That's what we'll call it. I've already done that there, and we'll say save it, and that's done. Go back to the 2D picture, and it shows you a little bit more. I've got it on a USB stick there. We're going to take it over to the other machine. Close that. Give me a sec. Take it out of there, and I'm going to jump out of this back to here, main camera on its own got me back again. Hopefully that all worked. Are you enjoying this? Leave a comment. I'm trying to mix this up as much as much as possible, showing you how the CNC can be integrated into the workflow. You know, so I might go a month without using it. I might use it all the time for about three weeks and not no other machine. It's another tool in the shed to be used. Okay, all of this is on here. And how are we going for time? We've got 10 minutes. I think we should be able to do that in 10 minutes' time. All right, so we're going to go over to this one. I'm going to take this camera out there. You can see where we're going. 
don't get giddy. I'm going to try and make sure that I don't pull that cable out as we're dragging it across the room. I've got the CNC set up and bring that over to about, about there. Now you can see I've got a space. Don't know if we really need me on the in this as well. Uh, Carl Cam on its own. Have we got a Carl Cam on its own? Give me a second. No, what about this one? Look, we might just go to this one. That'll let you see more of what I'm doing. Take the earmuffs and this and this and this. All right, I'm coming over. Now I've got to make sure that I put this in the right position. Where are we? This is going to cut that out of the top. I think it's got to go in this way. I'm going to get my plane and I'm going to make sure. As sure as I can be. And you watch, as soon as I'm sure, it'll, when I start the machine, it'll go totally pear-shaped and not do what I want it to do. So, this is going to be like that. So we're going to have the 50 millimeter end at this end. See what I mean? It's so important to get it right. And the 50 millimeter end is there. See, there's my rounded section that I want. Like that. That's how I want it to end up. So I'm going to sit it on top of there and I'm going to rotate it over and now I've got it. That's how it's going to end up. Put this in there and honestly if it doesn't work that way I'm just going to move the machine back so I'm not on top of myself and use the clamping elements. I've got one of John's bumpers down the end here. I'm using these other guys at the moment here. That should be fine. And down there. That should also be pretty fine. Now, everything's in place. I'm going to load the program. If it lets me. Come on, David. What's the story? There we go. Story is I'm an old person. Okay. I don't care about that. I'm going to load the G code from the USB. And it's called Joint Offense, I think. Hand plane joint offense. Okay, so the code is it's all loaded. I don't know if you can see it there. All right, now I need to change the units back to millimeters, which I have. And I'm also going to read off the end there. You can see if I spin this around, you can see I've got my 10 commandments up on the wall there. So let's turn on the control back box, Mac 4, and enable home XYZ, which I've done. I've just loaded the G code uh, and set to Mac 4 millimeters, which is the thing I just did then. I've already fitted the correct cutter, entered the, tile, the tool diameter, and touch off X, Y, and Z. So we need to enter the tool diameter. <sighs> Where are we? Which actually isn't going to worry me too much at the moment. We'll bring it back to here and across and back and page down. Whoop, down, David. And we're going to get the touch plate. And this guy is a brass sensor. And this is going to be connected to this. I do not have the control box for the spindle turned on at this stage. OK, so there's no fear of this starting up on me. Connect that to there. Move this back over a little. And let's see if I can get this lined up a little bit better for you. 
that should be okay. Which is great. We're going to millimeters and we're going to auto Z the machine. Stand beside here. Beautiful. And we're going to rotate it for the X axis and click OK. Whoop, wrong way, Y axis, there we go. And again beside here. And then the X axis, again the spindle isn't turned on, so it's, it's fine. The machine, I haven't even got the power supply to the spindle connected. Okay, that's found where it's got to go. And next thing we need to do is close that and that's all. I'm just quickly checking everything. It's metric, it's in position to get started, move a couple of things out of the way. I'm not going to put the dust hood on so you can watch. I will turn the dust extractor on, which is outside. So you can hear that. Put the eye muffs on. And also turn the spindle on. Okay, so that's the power. The spindle is enabled. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the uh, dust mask on. Because doing this without that hood Could be a bit problematic. This is what would normally go on it. I'm going to read across the end. Okay, put the dust boot, turn on the dust back, turn the bit on the VFD. Alright, everything's on. I'll say cycle start and I'll get over the side here as well, just in case. Cool. There she goes. going for a second pass, which isn't as deep. This is why I told it, the third pass, remember, I told it to do at, um, at one and a half millimetres, I think, or, or two millimetres. Anyway, it's not as much as this pass. As I say, with the, with the dust boot on, none of this would happen. But, you know, for the sake of demonstration, going to do its final pass, which is the shallow one.
a little bit of footage for the promos. Now the holes. Done. Great. Okay, what's the next thing? Take these off, turn everything off, turn the VFD off. Let's take it out of the clamps. There it is. Go back into the other room and I'll take the dust mask off in a second. Here we go. And done. What'd you think? Do you like it? That was super duper quick. And this is the end that's going to be down over that part, the part that I want. So rare earth magnet there, rare earth magnet there. The front of the plane is up here. And I'll cut this up with the uh, with this cap X, get it in position, run it through the table saw to remove that part and then continue on. <sighs> it's exciting. A little bit of muck on there. <laughs> I'm looking disheveled. Oh well, bad luck. All right, let me see. I think that's it. Again, sorry, Bob, that we didn't get, uh, <laughs> didn't get your part done. We'll go for that next week. Um, next week is Easter. We'll still be doing the show. And during the week, I'm still going to try and do this lockdown, midweek, uh, stay at home, just a chat. That's all it is, is a chat. We might do a little bit of woodworking, but it's just going to be a chat. Then what I might also do soon is we might get that dressing table back out and continue on with that. I think that's about it. If you're interested in what else I've been doing dur during the week, uh, I might have a picture here. Here we go. Uh, this is what I'm making at the moment. I'm, that's one already made and it's in use and I've got two more that I'm making at the moment and uh, I'm having a ball doing it. I'm using the pocket hole machine. I'm using the uh, just the standard. This guy here, because some things are too big to get into a pocket hole machine or even a jig, that thing is fantastic for larger sheets. Um, using, I've made a little jig up for doing all the dados and it's working very, very well. I cut the whole job out using the track saw and the TSO parallel guides and they've been fantastic. And there's a whole lot of tricks and tips I will bring you very soon about those guides that I had no idea. It's just be, when you use things, these ideas come to you. All right, I think that's about it. Thanks again to my patrons and thank you so much for watching. Uh, look after yourselves, be nice to each other and I shall see you next week or midweek. See you later. Bye.